I didn't just like boys. I was batshit insane for them. <laughs> Starting as early as kindergarten, I would dreamily watch the boys in class as we learned to hold pencils and use scissors and would fantasize about holding someone's hand. Not only was my alphabet out of order, but so were my priorities. <laughs> I would purposely trip myself every day during recess in the sandbox to try and get the attention of my crush, Kyle, because in my weird fantasy, he would rescue me and put a Band-Aid on my knee and give me a hug. However, I towered over him because I was the size of a third grader when I was only five. <laughs> Poor Kyle probably avoided me because he didn't want to be flattened like a pancake a la Looney Tunes cartoon during my daily trippings. Instead, I was just the weird kid who the teachers feared may have had a vestibular balance disorder. I grew up on a steady diet of Disney movies filled with love stories and way too much Thumbelina, so it felt like my purpose in life was to be the apple of a boy's eye. The freakish height difference didn't stop my intense boy craziness as I progressed through elementary school. I saw the other girls in my classes hit milestones that I never got to, get an eraser from the Scholastic Book Fair from a boy, a handwritten note, Friends at lunch teasing each other about mutual crushes. A hug, a handhold, even a kiss. I was seething with jealousy at each step that I saw my friends go through. I was etching dozens of boys' names on the bottom of my bed frame, to my dad's dismay, and filling journals with serial killer precision about my crush's activities and my feelings for them. I lumbered around the school through the years, growing taller and taller than my crushes, which pushed my chances of them liking me further and further away. On top of all this, I was also just awkward as hell. I had an older brother who did more of the socializing, and I grew up being in my own head most of the time. I was withdrawn and felt like I didn't fit in with others. When the girls at school would be talking about their Britney Spears notebooks, or which boys they liked, I felt too shy to say who I liked, so instead talked about how we would all die someday. <laughs> I was called an old soul by adults, which was their way of saying, that kid is so fucking depressed. <laughs> it was a deadly combo, and I was shit out of luck when it came to attracting the opposite sex. By the time that middle school began, my boy obsessive self was transforming into a pimply teenager hellbent on getting any attention from a boy at my school. However, vertically I was skyrocketing while also growing horizontally. The more room I was taking up in my jeans, my chances were lessening of anyone ever liking me because I would be too fat. One day at school I heard how a girl lost her virginity and I was in awe, curious, and jealous. I was 14 years old, and the hormones were screaming through my body like a banshee at all hours of the day. When I heard who it was, I nearly imploded. It was with my middle school crush, or at least the 11th one on the roster. <laughs> I felt like I got punched in the tit, and I wanted to grab her by her knockoff Avril Lavigne tie and choke her. I'm not sure if hormones can make you violent, but in this case, I'll blame it on them. <laughs> I practically ran home and wrote my version of what should have happened with me instead. <laughs> Raunchy details and all. By the way, smut written by teenage girls in the privacy of their own rooms is art that saves sanity during the hell of puberty and should be burned immediately <laughs> after being written because of how embarrassing it is. Or at least mine should have been. It definitely shouldn't have been read, but it was by my mom. I know, I lived it. This might be a good time to tell you my mom is a very Christian woman. <laughs> Not religious, she likes to say she is a woman of faith. She has lived a life that is guided by her faith 
And I know it has been her saving grace through a life filled with struggle from a very young age. She does not condemn, and I see her use it as a vehicle for serving others. She has given people the food she intended to eat. If she had long hair, she would probably wash someone's feet with it like Jesus. <laughs> she gives and she loves and she prays a lot too. And damn, that day I gave her something to pray about. <laughs> because I wrote some filth in that pink journal. <laughs> I left the journal out on my nightstand and when she was cleaning my room, she decided to check up on what was new in my life. I don't know if she had done that before or if it was her first time. I kind of hope it wasn't her first time because that must have been like getting whiplash from reading her 14 year old horny scrawlings. The next morning, my mom came and sat on the corner of my bed while I was still sleeping and began to talk. She would do this quite often. Seems like the best time to have an important conversation for her was when, when the other person is still sleeping drool onto their pillow. <laughs> mom shook me awake and held up the small pink journal in front of my bleary and crusty eyes, which instantly struck fear into me. My vision zeroed in on the small flowers and Barbie logo emblazoned on the front, which up until that point had served as a good disguise for the stirrings of sin within. <laughs> she then went on and recited lines to me from memory. <laughs> While my face felt so hot from embarrassment, I wished I could melt through the floors of my home and return to the core of the earth so I could escape my mother's reciting how I dreamed of ripping my crush's pants open as he passionately kissed me. <laughs> she then asked where I even got these ideas to write about and how they were so detailed. Had I done any of these things before? I desperately wanted to do the things I wrote about, but of course I didn't say that. I just mumbled, I like to write. She then talked about sexual intercourse to me for a very, very long time. Brutal. You know in movies how a main character stays static and everything around them moves quickly and they just look dazed? That was me. <laughs> After a long and detailed lecture, she ended with, Victoria, sex is a beautiful thing. However, God intended it to be with after someone gets married. Just wait, it will be worth it someday. Also, I showed your father your writing and threw away your journal pages. I died. <laughs> this is actually my ghost reading this now because a 14-year-old me died that day. I don't even know how to do that. I was hurt, pissed, and embarrassed that my mom read my journal of sweat. I felt like my most vulnerable and ramped up self had been peeled back layer by layer with each turning of the page that my mom tore through. I felt so exposed. I was already withdrawn as a child and awkward as a burgeoning adolescent amongst my peers. Wasn't I supposed to be safe in my own home? After weeks avoiding eye contact with my parents, one day I came home from school I found a thin magazine on my bed. It had two teenagers on the cover and it had, what's up with abstinence? Splashed across the front cover. <laughs> it touted 24 ways to show affection and ways to assert yourself. What the fuck was abstinence? I looked it up on my PC that was riddled with LimeWire viruses and was not sold. This did not seem fun. 
Either way, I flipped through and became engrossed. I read it cover to cover. The scare tactics of teenage motherhood described in the articles were working. In reality, it shouldn't have done shit because no one even wanted to touch me in the first place. It was also very Christian. I don't know where my mom got it, but it worked. That combined with all the seventh heaven I watched as a child, <laughs> it began to work on me. Like an assassin with deep training, being awoken with Christian propaganda, I would stop watching The Flavor of Love, talk, <laughs> <laughs> talking to strangers on chat rooms, and try to quell the crushes I had on every boy that had a pulse. I was a fat teenage Jason Bourne who began her mission of staying a virgin until marriage and signed it onto the Declaration of Values on the back page of the magazine. I was the virgin reborn. <laughs> Did it ultimately work? <laughs> no. Short answer, hormones exist. Do abstinence magazines and invading privacy to teach a lesson ever work? No. But it did leave an impact on me that lasted years. After my mom read my journal, I began to hide my writing. Whenever I would confide in my journals, I would hide them behind dressers or in drawers because I was so afraid of feeling exposed again. She would often ask me if there was anyone catching my eye at school to try and make conversation and feel closer to me and I would mumble that there wasn't much to choose from. Of course, that was a lie. I was in the middle of feeling guilty for having crushes on every guy with a scum stash and trying to wait for marriage, but I couldn't tell her that. I didn't want anyone to know that. I had to keep up a front with friends while I felt like my gut was filled with rocks from fear of being found out. By the time the boys began to pass me in height and show interest, I was fucking huge, guys. <laughs> I would wave them off to their faces while screaming internally to just let them in because it's what I've always wanted. There was a disconnect between what I wanted, what I would do, and what I thought I deserved. I didn't get my first real kiss until I was 17 from a 23-year-old massage therapist from my first job. Hello. <laughs> It was in the towel room at the spa I worked at. I was bored of folding towels into swans, and I figured I'd let the persistent older guy give me a kiss, because maybe I could work through the abstinence thing. Didn't work. I went home afterwards and felt disgusted with myself. I also realized how creepy and illegal it was, and that, damn, his Carmex lip balm has a gross aftertaste that really lasts. <laughs> Maybe if that journal had never been picked up and I had never been given that abstinence magazine, I wouldn't have felt so guilty about being poid crazy. There was never anything wrong with that in the first place. Would things be different for me if I had gotten that love note to put in my back pocket in elementary school? If I had hit the milestones my friends did, would it have made me feel like I was finally accepted by the boys I always liked? I don't know. None of that ever happened. However, I don't care about that anymore. Despite still feeling withdrawn from others at times and still occasionally bringing up death amongst friends, <laughs> I found the boy that I had the ultimate crush on. At first, I didn't trust my feelings. They were a mix of excitement and a sense of dread that was too good to be true, but then everything good hit me like a ton, a ton of bricks. I was ready to start tripping in the sandbox again if necessary to get that Band-Aid. He gives me plenty of notes, hugs, kisses, and that declaration of values on the back of that abstinence magazine <laughs> has turned into ashes by now. <laughs> to say he likes me back is saying it lightly, and he even put a rock on my finger that I get to wear all the time. <laughs> the list of past crushes is copious, but he's the crown jewel. I guess dreams do come true. Victoria L., ladies and gentlemen, Victoria.